Ganesh Man Singh was born on 9th of November 1915 AD at Yatkatul, Kathmandu. During his birth, Nepal was under the Iron Fist rule of the Ranas with Chandra Samsar as its Prime Minister. In the year 1915 AD, global politics were being shaped by the First World War, a large section of South Asia was under the British Empire. Ganesh Man Singh lost his father Gyan Man Singh at an early age of 8. His own grandfather too had passed away at the age of 33 and was therefore raised by his eldest grandfather Ratnaman Singh. Ratnaman Singh, who served as a Sardar during Ganesh Man Singh's birth, rose all the way up to the position of Bada Kaji during his service to the Ranas. During his growing years, Ganesh Man Singh was an unruly child, would be seen playing marbles in the street, sunning schools and swimming in the Bagmati river nearby. After his father's death, Ganesh Man Singh was admitted to Darbar school. One day during school, a boy addressed him using obscene verse. Ganesh Man Singh slapped that boy in exchange. The boy on the verge of tears complained to headmaster. Ganesh Man Singh was summoned to headmaster's office and was questioned about his audacity to raise hands upon a Ranaji. The principal reached for his can to punish Ganesh Man Singh. However, Ganesh Man Singh jumped out and escaped from the headmaster's room and never to return to school again. Ganesh Man Singh was angered because he was not even allowed a chance to explain himself and felt it was an injustice on the part of the headmaster. Meanwhile, Ganesh Man Singh decided against telling his family that he had quit school. During school hours, he would head out from home and loiter aimlessly. His setup didn't last long though. He was caught eventually. His grandmother decided that Ganesh Man Singh would not study and be involved in trade like other family members. However, his grandfather Ratnakaji was not willing, instead arranged for him to be tutored at home. At the age of 17, Ganesh Man Singh's grandfather took him to Rudra Samsar's Darbar for the job. Ganesh Man Singh would ride a bicycle to work, a symbol of wealth and prestige during that time. Although minimum traffic rules prevailed, it was compulsory for bicycle riders to install a bell and a lightning system. However, not many, including Ganesh Man Singh, paid attention towards it. One day, on his way to an office, an army officer stopped Ganesh Man Singh. Using a derogatory tone, the army officer hurled racial abuses at Ganesh Man Singh, calling him a sorry newar for wearing clean clothes and riding a bicycle without lights and a bell. Ganesh Man Singh politely reminded the officer that it was the police and not the military's duty to remand cyclists for breaking the rule. The army officer, however, continued his rant, up to a point where Ganesh Man Singh could not tolerate anymore. And out of patience and emboldened, Ganesh Man Singh pounced on him and beat the army officer up. The matter was taken to Padma Samsar because Ganesh Man Singh had dealt four blows to the officer. Padma Samsar instructed a guard to hold Ganesh Man Singh by his ear and pull him up four times. During his working years, Ganesh Man Singh would be seen gambling a lot. He had lost quite a hefty sum of money and owed a lot of money to his creditors, an amount that could not be covered with his salary. He even tricked his grandmother towards giving him her golden bangles to pawn and gamble more. Also, one day, when his grandfather was away in Hetaura, he broke up the Dukiti and stole an amount equal to 25 to 30,000 rupees, a hefty sum of money then. With the amount, he paid all his creditors and with the balance, headed to Kolkata, India. During the first 15 days, Ganesh Man Singh enjoyed the city, toured the attractions, watched cinemas, explored new places. In the third week, he came back to Hetaura to meet his grandfather who asked him the reason to steal. 
after a slight admonishing, it was decided Ganesh Man Singh would return to Kolkata. In Kolkata, Ganesh Man Singh resumed his studies and cleared his matricular examination. After clearing his matriculation, Ganesh Man Singh joined the Vidya Sagar College. In Vidya Sagar College, he started gravitating towards political activities, watched demonstrations, read about global and Nepali politics, and took a keen interest in reading newspapers. So much so, Ganesh Man Singh started mailing newspaper clippings about Nepal's political situation published in the Indian newspaper to his friend in Nepal. Ganesh Man Singh's first encounter with Sukhara Sastri was in Kolkata, when he was giving a philosophical discourse. Ganesh Man Singh, an audience of the discourse, asked him a personal question with an objective to demean him. How come a 42 years old is married to a young wife? Ganesh Man Singh questions with an intention to belittle Sukhara Sastri. Ganesh Man Singh later admits that he was driven by a self inferiority complex and in the years to come develops great admiration for Sukhara Sastri. A sacred political party, Praja Parishad, was formed on 2nd June 1936 AD at Om Bahal Tol in Kathmandu. The founding of Nepal Praja Parishad was proposed by Dastra Chand and Tanka Prasad Acharya in a hotel in Bhimpedi, Makwanpur district of Nepal. Praja Parishad received the support of additional people including Dharma Bhakta Mathema. The organization's head office was kept in Dharma Bhakta Mathema's house in Ombaha. The leading members of the party were Tanka Prasad Acharya, Ramhari Sarma, Dastra Chand, Dharma Bhakta Mathema, Jeev Raj, Surya Prasad, etc. The aim of the party was to overthrow the Rana rule and establish a democratic system of government under the leadership of King Trivon Bear Victim Sahadev. Dharma Bhakta Mathema was a physical instructor of King Trivon, which allowed Dharma Bhakta Mathema to act as a go between the king and the Praja Parishad. Praja Parishad party worked very secretly for some years. Initially, Nepal Praja Parishad distributed handwritten pamphlets among the people and wrote articles against the Rana dynasty in Nepal in an Indian socialist paper called Janata and another paper published in Kolkata named Advance. Later, Tanka Prasad Acharya brought a printing machine from India and the organization started to distribute pamphlets against the Rana dynasty to enlighten the people against the rule of Ranas in Nepal. In spite of all odds, King Trivivan secretly came in touch with the leaders of the movement. On being assured of the king's support, the movement gained momentum, with the monarch as the focal point of inspiration and guidance. King Trivivan gave his moral support to the organizer of the party. The king gave them rupees 4,000 Indian currency to meet the expense of the party. The Praza Parishad became active and started distributing pamphlets explaining the arbitrary Rana rule. For about four months, the government did not know who were doing it. Gangalal Swasta and Ganesh Man Singh, the duo, began their search for Praza Parishad. Once a week, they would search for the any leads towards the party and other days both led their own lives. However, they were unable to find any leads towards the underground party. One day, in between the weeks of searches, Ganesh Man Singh, while walking between Jonche and Om Bahal, saw a muscular man massaging himself with oil. Ganesh Man Singh flew into rage thinking, how could there be two lions in one forest? Without an invitation, Ganesh Man Singh entered the house and challenged him to display of physical fitness. Ganesh Man Singh lost. Still not giving up, on another occasion, Ganesh Man Singh challenged him to a boxing match. The muscular man allowed Ganesh Man Singh to hit a few blows of which Ganesh Man Singh took advantage of. This infuriated the muscular man and the muscular man dealt a huge single blow. Ganesh Man Singh got knocked out on the spot. This muscular man was no other than Dharma Bhakta Mathema. Later, Dharma Bhakta Mathema became very good friends of Ganesh Man Singh. 
Once, while discussing the pamphlets being distributed by the Praza Parishad, Dharma Bhakta Mathima warned Ganesh Man Singh to read them in the privacy of his own home. Ganesh Man Singh assumed that Dharma Bhakta Mathima was scared of the Ranas. On one particular day, Dharma Bhakta Mathima asked Ganesh Man Singh to bring Ganga Lal along with him. The meeting had to be arranged in private because Ganga Lal's resta was on payroll and under the observation of the Ranas. After the three met, Dharma Bhakta Mathima revealed he was one of the founding members of Praja Parishad. Ganga Lal and Ganesh Man Singh did not believe him. As a proof, Dharma Bhakta Mathima took out the pamphlets and told them that this was going to be the next pamphlet they would be seeing on the streets. After being convinced, the three headed towards Dharma Bhakta Mathima's home to read the content of the next pamphlet. As the three rushed down Bijeshwari Road, Dharma Bhakta Mathima stopped suddenly. Dharma Bhakta Mathima said, It is a prescribed rule of Praja Parishad that one must take a sacred vow before joining the party. We have arrived at Bijeshwari Temple. Let us take our vows there. The trio entered the temple. Dharma Bhakta Mathema stood in the center. Ganga Lal Shrestha to the right of Dharma Bhakta Mathema and Ganesh Man Singh to the left. Touching the feet of Goddess Bhagavati, all three took the solemn vow. From today, our efforts will be dedicated towards strengthening the Praja Parishad. Should we be caught while pursuing our goals, we will rather die rather than implicate the lives of others. Thus, in this way, Ganga Lal Shrestha and Ganesh Man Singh became the members of Praja Parishad. It hadn't been many days since Ganesh Man Singh had joined the Praja Parishad when his marriage was fixed. Ganesh Man Singh and his younger brother, Shankar Man Singh's marriage were fixed to be held in the same ceremony. During the feast, which was held in June 1948, his grandfather, Barakaji Ratnaman, spent a great expense. The entire event was a grand affair and attended by Sri Tin Maharaj Juddha Samsar himself. Several other prominent Rana members and the British ambassador too attended the feast. Dharma Bhakta Mathema too attended the feast, and Ganesh Man Singh wondered if Dharma Bhakta Mathema regretted his decision to induct Ganesh Man Singh into Praja Parishad. At that time, there was a rumor about Ganesh Man Singh being an informer for the Ranas. Ganesh Man Singh wondered if Dharma Bhakta Mathema looking at the Pomponess of the affair believed the suspicion to be true. Soon, Juddha Samsher became active in controlling the work of Praja Parishad. Juddha Samsher announced a reward of rupees 5000 to anyone who would give the information about the Praja Parishad. The reward tempted Ramji Joshi, a member of Praja Parishad, and he disclosed the secret. There was a cinema hall in the Naranhiti Palace of King Trivun. Every year, during the festival of Tihar, the Rana used to give money for the king. In the conspiracy by the Praja Parishad, the same cinema hall was to be bombed when King Trivand would come out. On the same basis, many of the conspirator house were surrounded and were arrested. One day, Ganga Lal arrived hastily at Ganesh Man Singh's house and under his saw, he was hiding at the typewriter used to print the Praja Parishad leaflets. News was circulating that police had searched Dharma Bhakta Mathema's house. Ganga Lal suspected police would search his house too. Therefore, had got the typewriter to hide it somewhere. After hiding the typewriter, Ganesh Man and Ganga Lal went to Dharma Bhakta Mathema's house. The whole area was cordoned and policemen could be seen searching the rooms. They caught a glimpse of Dharma Bhakta, their last glimpse of Dharma Bhakta as a free man. After a brief stay, Ganga Lal and Ganesh Man Singh headed towards Ganga Lal's home. There too, police were frantically searching his house. What should I do, Ganesh Manji? Ganga Lal's resta asked. Ganesh Man Singh advised against the idea of fleeing away. Bidding goodbye, Ganga Lal's resta head towards his home while Ganesh Man Singh to his own house. Ganga Lal's resta was arrested. Ganga Lal's resta 
was caught by the authorities in charge of distributing pamphlets in Asantol, advocating human rights and found guilty of sedition. Gangala Shwester was accused of making an open speech in an open forum and talking against the Rana rule. Police, however, did not come to Ganesh Man Singh's home the same night. The next day, Ganesh Man Singh find out almost all members of Praza Parishat, including Tanka Prasad Acharya, Govinda Prasad Upadhyay, Bal Bahadur Pandey, and Puskarnath Upreti were arrested. On the third night, after the arrests were made, police arrived at Ganesh Man Singh's residence too. Out of respect for the grandfather, they limited their search to Ganesh Man's room only. They found him in possession of the book, Russian Revolution, and a manuscript of short stories by Ganga Lal's Rasta. Ganesh Man Singh too was arrested. During the interrogation of Ganesh Man Singh, Ganesh Man Singh did not reveal any information. He confessed his allegiance to Praza Parishat. One time when Nara Samshar Rana asked Ganesh Man Singh his dissatisfaction with the state, he shared his personal observation. We have no respect and honor. The Ranas can take away anybody's daughter any day, whereas if a Newar boy runs away with the girl of a Chetri family, he is paraded and sentenced to jail. I see much injustice around me, therefore needed to oppose the regime," Ganesh Man said. Juddha Samshir established a special court to deal with the prominent member of Praza Parishad. According to the Count decision in 1940 AD, Dharma Bhakta Matema, Ganga Lal Shrestha, Sukara Sastri and Dasra Chand were given death sentences, whereas Tanka Prasad Acharya, Ramhari Sarma, Chura Prasad and Govinda Prasad were given life imprisonment as the killing of Brahmins was not allowed under Nepali law at that time. Tanka Prasad Acharya and Ram Hari Sharma were declared untouchables. Sukhara Sastri was hanged to death over a tree at Teku. Dharma Bhakta Matema was hanged at Sifal. Dasra Chand and Ganga Lal Shrestha were sought near Sova Vagwati Temple. Thus, Nepal Praza Parishat was dissolved in January 1941 AD. After spending four years in jail, Ganesh Man Singh escaped the jail by climbing the walls. He then left Kathmandu and went to India. Once in India, most of his friends were in the airfield in Lahore, present day Pakistan. Ganesh Man Singh too thought of joining the Air Force. Ganesh Man Singh became an airman of the 17th Flight Battalion based in Walton Airfield, Lahore. Ganesh Man Singh was suggested to be a gunner, gun operators from the backseat of the plane, but he was not interested. After trying his luck in another airfield in Bangalore, Ganesh Man Singh gave up his flying career. Meanwhile, Ganesh Man Singh went to Bombay and then to Banaras to meet his younger brother Sankar Man Singh. From Banaras, he went to Kolkata as he started finding it difficult to bother others for shelter he went to Kalimpong. One day, he received a letter from Dev Sankarlal and with it a newspaper clipping. The newspaper clipping was an appeal by Bisweswar Prasad Koryala emphasizing upon the need for an organization to establish democracy in Nepal. A handwritten letter by Dev Sankarlal suggested Ganesh Man Singh meet BP Prasad Koryala. Thus, he headed to Kolkata to meet BP Koryala. The meeting was fixed for 25th and 26th January 1947 in Kolkata. The meeting was an attendance of several prominent personalities from Nepali politics. BP Prasad Koirala, GM Singh, Krishna Prasad Bhattarai, DN Pradhan, Gopal Prasad Bhattarai, amongst other. Ganesh Man Singh presented his case for naming the party Prasad Parishat. However, two members opposed the name arguing that Praza Parishat stood for violence, whereas the new party was about non-violent movements. Eventually, the name Nepal Rastriya Congress was agreed upon. The meeting in Kolkata 
upon request of Ganesh Man Singh decided Tanka Prasad Acharya as the party's president. Tanka Prasad Acharya, who was sentenced along with Ganesh Man Singh, was serving a life sentence then. BP Koyala was elected executive president. On 4th March 1947 AD, the laborers of the jute mills in Biratnagar launched a strike, demanding a raise in wages, proper accommodation, arrangement, healthcare, and education for the laborers' children. The strike was initiated by Tarini Prasad Koirala, Manmohan Adhikari, Giriza Prasad Koirala, Yuvraj Adhikari, and Gehendra Harisarma, and were inspired by the formation of Rashtriya Congress. In the second phase of protest, Ranas, who were unused to such demonstration, on less power. Troops were called in from Kathmandu and laborers were sought at. A few were killed while many were injured. Eventually, the leaders of the strike, BP Koirala, Giriza Prasad Koirala, Manmohan Adhikari, Tarvini Prasad Koirala, Yuvraj Adhikari, and Gehendra Harisarma were arrested. They were all chained and marched to Kathmandu. This incident triggered a chain of national wide protests against the Rana regime in Nepal. Following the arrest from Birat Nagar, Rashtriya Congress decided to issue a notice to the Rana government. If within one month the arrested leaders were not released, a nationwide satyagraha would be launched. The ultimatum also asked the Rana government to pave way for others' political reforms. The government, however, did not pay any attention and in April 1947 AD, a national white Satyagraha was launched. From Kathmandu to Janakpur and Birgans to Biratnagar, protesters powered in the streets chanting political slogans against the government. In Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur, activities including students demanding reform poured in the streets. Nepal Women's Association was formed and the participation of women's leaders such as Mangala Devi Singh, wife of Ganesman Singh, Sahana Pradhan, Sadhana Pradhan, amongst others, were the forefront of the protest. A nationwide movement for political reform based on political consciousness had indeed begun. In India, Ganesh Man Singh and other leaders were overseeing the Satyagraha movement. They were mobilizing other resources and arranging meetings to give further direction to the movement. In Calcutta, Ganesh Man Singh reached out to Vet Narayan and Satya Narayan Bahadur Singh for financial assistance. However, they proposed starting a publication which would carry the message to Nepali people instead. Thus, a weekly paper began publishing from Calcutta. In the meantime, BP Koirala, who suffered from cancer, had fallen seriously ill. BP Koirala was in need of medical attention and needed to be released from jail for the same. Therefore, Rashtriya Congress decided to reach out to Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was in Calcutta at that time, and it was decided that Ganesh Man Singh and Krishna Prasad Vatvai would go to meet him and request for the release of BP Koirala. The Rana government released BP Koirala upon receiving Mahatma Gandhi's request. In April 1948 AD, Padma Samshir, in violation of constitutional law, declared Rashtriya Congress to be an illegal party. Days later, Padma Samshir moved to India, paving way for Mohan Samshir to become Nepal's Prime Minister. Mohan Samsir's ascensions to power caused huge distrust in the possibility of the reform in Nepal. Police again arrested BP Koirala along with Tri Ratna Bajracharya and Gauri Vakta on the charges of conspiracy. BP Koirala too had started a hunger strike in jail demanding improvement in living condition of inmates and compulsory human treatment of all inmates. His hunger strike caused a sensation in India and Indian media published several stories about Nepal's political situation. For Mohan Samsher, who was readily to force new political relations with India, the negative media publicity meant bad news. Therefore, with the promise of reform, 
Moon Samser ordered the release of BP Koyala. After BP Koyala was released, Rashtriya Congress tried to contact members of the Rana clan who were exiled in India, mainly Subarna Samser Janga Bahadur Rana and Mahabir Samser Janga Bahadur Rana. Subarna Samser Janga Bahadur Rana was the grandson of Rana Prime Minister Bhim Samser Janga Bahadur Rana and the son of General Hiranaya Samser Janga Bahadur Rana. The exiled members were planning an armed revolution against the Rana regime. Unlike Rashtriya Congress, they had access to money, wealth and therefore were able to mobilize human and other resources very quickly. BP Koyala met with Subarna Samsha Janga Bahadur Rana and proposed he join the Rashtriya Congress. However, Subarna Samsha rejected the proposal. Almost immediately after the meeting, in December 1948 AD, a new party called Nepal Prajatantra Congress was formed under the leadership of Subarna Samsha. The party said its objective was to uproot the Rana regime in Nepal and establish a democratic system in the country. One day, Ganesman Singh received a wire from BP Koyala which asked him to come soon. Ganesman Singh, after managing funds for his trip and making food arrangements for other party members, departed on a train. He is informed by BP Koyala that Subarna Samser had proposed Rashtriya Congress and Prajatantra Congress should merge into one party. Finally, the new party, Nepali Congress, was established. The formation of Nepali Congress instilled a renewed sense of hope within Nepalese living in Nepal and those exiled in India. Subarna Samsher and Mahabir Samsher committed rupees 1 crore each for the party. Bibi Koyala and Ganesman Singh were astounded with that kind of financial support, they could run a highly effective revolutionary campaign. Finally, Ganesh Mansang arrived in Kathmandu after six years. Before that, he was in jail for four years, and before he was sentenced, he was in Kolkata for three years. In total, he was away from Kathmandu for 13 long years. Ganesh Mansang had two missions in Kathmandu. One was to take King Trivan from his palace to Palpa and the other was to launch an armed revolution against the Rana rulers. The armed revolution was to be in the form of an explosion at Basantapur Darbar Square on the day of Indra Jatra festival. But planting the bomb anywhere would mean putting innocent's life at risk. Therefore, Ganesh Man Singh and the team had to abandon the plan. As Ganesh Man Singh and the team thought of ways to take King Trivan to Palpa, the Rana government, upon learning the revolutionary attempts to stage an explosion in Basantapur Darwar, intensified the search for Ganesh Man Singh and his friends. They started arresting those who were involved in the plot. The situation deteriorated so badly that Ganesh Man Singh had to hide in the forest between Pasupati Temple and Gujeshuri Temple during the daytime. The day was 9th October 1950 AD. Ganesh Singh was finally arrested and taken back to Kathmandu. Ganesh Singh was taken to the same jail he was confined in 10 years earlier when he was arrested for his involvement with the Prajaparishad. He was chained and kept in the dark room. The officer ordered a beating for Ganesh Singh. Two guards produced their whips and started lashing at him instantly. He was beaten continuously until he lost his consciousness. The number of lashes he received was at least 603 until he collapsed. Around the time Ganesh Man Singh had been arrested, Nepali Congress had announced to launch an armed revolution against the Rana government. Also while he was in jail, King Trivuvan along with his family members under the pretext of going on hunting expedition, escaped the palace and took refuge in the Indian embassy. Mohan Samsher declared King Trivon a traitor and crowned Ganendra, Trivon's second grandchild, as the next king of Nepal. Ganendra was away at a relative's place 
and could not accompany King Fervon. The king has made a bold move towards demanding democratic reforms in Nepal. Ganesh Man Singh thought from his cell. On the same day when child prince Ganendra was crowned as a new king, mass demonstration and protests against this act started in every corner of the country, including the Kathmandu Valley. The Liberation Army of Nepali Congress started an armed revolt against the Rana regime. They were successful in taking control of many places in Tarai. On 10th November, two Indian planes landed at Gaucher Airport, now called Trivon International Airport, and flew back to New Delhi with the royal family, excluding the infant King Ganendra. King Trivon was formally welcomed by Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. On 10th November 1950 AD, pamphlets and leaflets were scattered and on the same night, the liberation force of the Nepali Congress led by Thirbam Malla and Puran Singh made a surprise attack and captured Birgons and made prisoner of its governor, Som Samshir. The jails were broken and the government house was attacked. Thirbam Malla, nephew of Subarna Samshir Janga Bahadur Rana, who was leading an armed revolt against the Ranas in Birgans during the revolt of 1950-80 was martyred. In the meantime, the insurgent force got victories at Tan, Deokuri, Jazarkot, Masikot, Kailali, Kanchanpur, Palpa, Gorkha and other places. The people's government was established in all these places. Biratnagar, Jhapa, Udaipur, Pasupatinagar, Dhankuta and Bhojpur all fell into the hands of Nepali Congress and the people's government was established here. The entire nation was engulfed in an armed revolution. The removal of King led to a huge demonstration in the country that compelled the Rana Prime Minister Mohan Samshir Janga Bahadur Rana to come in negotiation with Trivuvan and the Nepali Congress. On 22nd November 1950 AD, Jawaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister of India, officially announced that India was not going to recognize Ganendra Bir Bikram Sa as a legitimate king of Nepal. When Mohan Samshir saw the situation was out of his control, he sent the king's brother-in-law, Sir Kesar Samshir Janga Bahadur Rana and Bijay Samshir Janga Bahadur Rana to New Delhi for peace talk. In New Delhi, King Trivuvan, representative of Nepali Congress and of Rana government, all sat together to discuss the situation. At last, an agreement was reached according to which King Trivuvan to form a new ministry under his leadership consisting of Nepali Congress and Rana on the equal basis. On 1951 AD, February 14, Ganesh Man Singh was finally released from jail after 10 long years. The time was 4 pm and thousands of Kathmandu residents had gathered at Turikhel to see a recently freed Ganesh Man Singh. The crowd, while moving from Turikhel, were chanting, Bir Ganesman Jindabad, our leader Jindabad. The time was 11 pm. He was finally reunited with his family after 10 long years. Ganesman Singh was arrested just months before his marriage to Mangala Devi. King Trivuvan flew back to Nepal along with the members of the royal family and the leaders of the Congress party on 15 February 1951 AD. On 18 February 1951 AD, three days after the return, King Trivuvan formally declared an end to Rana's family rule and established a democratic system. But Mohan Samshir continued as a Prime Minister for a few more months. Thus, the century-old family autocracy of the Ranas came to an end and democracy was introduced under the active leadership of King Trivuvan. Ganesh Man Singh is appointed Minister of Industries and Commerce. The swearing-in ceremony was being organized by Vijay Samshir, son of Mohan Samshir. He was assisted by Narendra Mani Acharya Dekchet, a senior and able administration of the time. First to be sworn in was Mohan Samshir, then Babar Samshir, followed by B.P. Koyala, Subarna Samshir, Chura Ras Samshir, and then Ganesman Singh. During Ganesman Singh's turn, 
unlike Bipi Koirala and Adar, who bowed his head before the king, Ganesh Man Singh simply folded his hand in a namaste. This behavior was not liked by Ganesh Man Singh's grandfather Bada Kaji Ratnaman, but Ganesh Man Singh believed he was there to take an oath for a position he had earned by his hard work, therefore he should not have to bow before the king. Ganesh Man Singh and all ministers were also given a motor vehicle for an official use which was handed to them at the palace ground after the swearing and ceremony. Thus ended the 104 years long Rana rule over the Kingdom of Nepal. After countless struggles by numerous people, many who even sacrificed their lives for the cause, Nepal had finally become a democratic nation. The next government of Nepal would be elected by its own people. Nepalese can choose who will come into power. One would believe Ganesh Man Singh's and Nepal's political woes would come to an end after the peaceful transition of power. But that wasn't the case. In December 1960 AD, King Mahendra used his emergency power and took charge of the state once again, claiming that the Congress government had fostered corruption, prompted party over national interest, failed to maintain law and order and encourage anti-national elements. Political parties were outlawed and all prominent political figures, including the Prime Minister B.P. Koryala, were put behind jails. Ganesh Man Singh was imprisoned for eight consecutive years after the abduction of democracy in 1960-80. After release from Sundari Jal prison along with B.P. Koyala in 1968-80, Ganesh Man Singh had expanded his political organization in exile. He returned to Nepal in 1976-80 with the policy of national unity and reconciliation and remained active against the then panchayat system. Ganesh Man Singh had played an equally leading role in the student movement and in 1979 AD, after B.P. Koyala's death, Ganesh Man Singh, as the supreme leader of the Congress, led the Satyagraha movement of 1984 AD. In 1989 AD, Ganesh Man Singh became the supreme commander of the movement and became everyone's favorite and declared movement against the Panchayat system along with the Communist Party. Anti-government demonstration that lasted over 50 days forced King Birendra to relent after at least 45 peoples were killed. The king lifted the ban on political parties imposed by his father, King Mahendra, and agreed to remain a constitutional monarch. After the fall of Panchayat system under the pressure of people's movement, the then absolute king, Birendra, has offered Ganesh Man Singh to take the office of prime minister. But Ganesh Man Singh has flatly rejected the offer made by the king and said to the king, From now on, the people will choose the prime minister, not the king. As the representative of people, Ganesh Man Singh had chosen Krishna Prasad Bhattarai as the intermediate prime minister, giving him the responsibility of the promulgating a new constitution and then holding general election to elect a new parliament. Ganesh Man Singh was honored by United Nations with Human Rights Award in 12 December 1993 for his outstanding contribution in the field of human rights. Ganesh Man Singh became the first statesman from South Asia to receive this prestigious award. He died on 1997, September 18th at Kathmandu. Thank you.